Hello dear friends, a very warm welcome to the wonderful world of literature stories at your channel Lit E City. I Saurabh Agrawal here is once again has brought you to a lesson on Salman Rushdie. Uh, in an earlier video, we have discussed about uh, some novels of Salman Rushdie, his uh, earlier novels, uh, the novels which uh, catapulted him to uh, popularity, he became a prominent novelist. In this particular video, we will discuss some of his novel written during the middle stage of his career. Uh, the novels like Moore's Last Sigh and The Ground Beneath Her uh, Feet, uh, Fury, then Shalimar the Clown and also The Enchantrance of Florence. Uh, there is no need to say that Salman Rushdie is one of the most prominent uh, uh, fictional voice at present. He is not only controversial not only topical he is a master exponent of uh, post-colonial writing incorporating various elements of postmodernism like magical realism which is one of his forte and also uh, he is very uh, vocal regarding issues of migration and uh, settlers uh, diasporic writing political commentary all these things along with various uh, history historical uh, we can say uh, intertextual combinations uh, they can be found aplenty in his work so let's start discussing these novels their stories and certain other elements the first novel which we have taken today is the moors last sigh which was published in 1995 uh, the title, The Moor's Last Sigh, it is taken actually from the story of Boabdil, uh, popularly known as Abu Abdullah Muhammad, who was the last Moorish king of Grenada. Okay, the spot after Grenada uh, surrendered to the European powers, uh, the spot from which Boabdil last looked upon his uh, homeland, Boabdil, that particular spot at the sea is known as Pieretto del Suspiro del Moro or in English it is translated as Pass of the Moors Sai. It is from this context that Salman Rushdie has taken this title. The story the protagonist of the story is Morris Jogoibai, uh, who is titular Moor. He is the fourth child and the only son of a wealthy businessman and who is also a crime boss, Abraham Jogobi, uh, who is actually a Jew based on uh, in Cochin. And the mother of this boy is celebrated painter Aurora the Gama, who is a Portuguese Catholic. Uh, she is also heiress to her family's spy fortune and she is a prominent figure in the Indian independence movement. Aurora in one of her painting has depicted the fall of Grenada and the painting is titled The Moor's Last Sigh. Now, uh, the magical element which we have seen frequently in works of Salman Rushdie uh, that Moor has a strange health condition which causes him to age twice as quickly as the normal humans. <coughs> this is similar to what we have seen in, uh, we can say, the Midnight's Children in Problem with Salim Sinai or we can say um, extraordinary quality, supernatural quality, magical element. Uh, through these particular features, Salman actually, Salman Rushdie actually uh, brings certain, we can say, issues which cannot be presented uh, in a very linear and surfacical um, novel. Now, Moore goes to Spain in search of his mother's three paintings which were stolen by Vasco Miranda. He is the antagonist of the novel. He is a painter based on uh, based in Goa and now he is in Spain. Uh, he This Vasco has been a silent lover and ob obsessively jealous of Aurora because he himself is a painter. He cannot tolerate uh, the success and popularity of uh, uh, his beloved and that is why he stole the 
these paintings and took with him to Spain. And he has made a great fortune in Spain by selling some of his painting to the Westerners. And uh, with this money, he has established a fort like mansion on the top hills of Benangeli. Benangeli uh, is a place in Spain. Moore finds his way into Vasco's fortress, but there he is imprisoned and locked up with a beautiful Japanese picture restorer named Oi Ui. Now she is uh, uh, imp uh, she has been tasked uh, to restore the original picture of bare-breasted young Aurora by removing the painting of the Moor's last sight painted over it. Okay, you get the point. Originally, it was painting of uh, young Aurora herself uh, in a bare-breasted pose. Later, Aurora painted the Moor's last eye over it. Now, uh, Vasco wants to remove this Moor's last eye and to have the original picture. Vasco orders the Moor because he is now also imprisoned to write a life story in full detail and promises in a typical fashion that like Shahrazad in the Arabian Nights in uh, 101 1001 Nights Moor will be allowed to live as long as his story amuses him he kills Ai Ui after she completes restoring Aurora's picture Moor is also uh, has also finished writing the story of his life and Vasco is about to shoot him when his heart explodes Vasco's heart explodes and Vasco himself has predicted uh, that it will happen and it will be the cause of his death the moor runs away from there leaving Vasco in the pool of blood he nails the sheets of his story Vasco's story on the trees and fences during his flight from the fortress finally he arrives in the cement from where the novel has begun and it is presumed Moore will find peace through his death here. So it's a, a we can say mixture of historical facts and also fantasy which is a very uh, we, we can say integral element of Salman Rushdie's fiction and with this he has presented a, a story. The next novel, The Ground Beneath Her Feet, which was published in 1999, it is uh, one of, uh, we can say, most uh, talked about novel of Salman Rushdie. In fact, it is considered a um, uh, feat in itself because this novel has presented the history, alternative history of uh, rock era, rock, music of uh, pop culture or rock culture in a very fascinating fantasy story. A novel is basically based on Orpheus myth. Orpheus who is um, a, a very uh, popular character of Greek myth and he was a celebrated uh, singer composer and uh, he married Eurydice but on the very day of their wedding uh, Eurydice dies because she was bitten by a viper. Now Orpheus descended into the underworld to bring back uh, Eurydice uh, to the life. Uh, it's a very uh, we can say interesting story where because of his divine music he is allowed to take back Eurydice only on one condition he should not look back uh, but uh, he, just when he is about to reach uh, the earth he is tempted to look back at his wife and there uh, she is uh, basically once again confiscated to the underworld underground now, Rashdi basically uh, takes this myth and converts into something new. He has also taken uh, in this particular novel many historical actual events and has twisted uh, them. He has also sorted to Indian myth of Kam, Kamdev and Shiv uh, and along with Devi Saraswati. So many, many things have been incorporated. That is why some time, sometimes this novel becomes quite difficult to uh, decipher. Rashmi sets the novel in the rock music era. Two men, Amos and Umid Rai Merchant, these, these two men love the same women 
Veena Apsara. The title itself is very much indicative of the character. Veena is symbolic of music and she is also uh, the instrument held by Indian goddess Saraswati. Apsara we know very well uh, is used for a beautiful woman. Their love story provides a background and alternate history to the entire 1950 to 1990s period of the growth of uh, rock music. The book ironically begins on February 14, 1989. It is ironic because it is the very date on which fatwa was issued by Ayatollah Khomeini, the Iranian leader against Rushdie for his book Satanic Verses, which we have discussed uh, in our uh, other video on Salman Rushdie. Uh, the book begins in Mexico uh, and uh, at this particular moment an earthquake splits the ground under the 44 year old Vina and swallows her. After this tragic opening, Rai Merchant's first person narrative jumps, jumps back to 1950s uh, when they, they started these three persons of the novel started their journey. First we have Amas who is a son of Parsi Anglophiles, Lady Santa and Sir da, uh, Darius Zarex Kama. Uh, he is born in 1937. He is surviving half of twins uh, one twin uh, out of this uh, duo dies and he is haunted throughout his life by his dead brother he also has a twin pair uh, an elder twin pair virus who is one day hit by his father's cricket ball he becomes uh, dumb and then he becomes a mystique then other one is Cyrus who is keep uh, who keeps quiet otherwise and then he, uh, ultimately he kills his father also so he becomes a psychotic killer. Uh, on the other hand, we have second character Veena spending her early childhood in USA. Veena Apsara, she is child of Indian and Greek American parentage. You can look the diasporic element. We can say migration, ele migratory elements. We can say uh, liquid nationality, which is a prominent feature of later works of Salman Rushdie. They came to Mumbai. She uh, begins to live with the family. Uh, initially, she lives with her aunt, but she is maltreated uh, there, so she shifts to the family of Rai Merchant. Veena is awesomely beautiful, extraordinary voice, and nine year old Rai falls immediately in love with her. Shortly afterwards, the 12 year old Veena and the 19 years old Ormus, they met and they fall in love with each other. Ormus also has knack of composing songs and uh, these songs, the idea, the music to these songs come to his mind by the inspiration of his dead twin brother. He is sometimes very desperately frustrated when he finds that the tunes which come to his mind becomes popular later. Uh, now Ormus is very much uh, we can say saint like he even doesn't kisses <coughs> Veena for a long time and when Ormus offers uh, uh, marriage it causes her to run off and the couple loses sli sight of each other for, uh, for 10 years it is <coughs> sight. And during this time, Veena has physical relationship with Rai. Ormus, meanwhile, shifts to London. Now, in London, Mull Standish. Mull Standish is, a, a, we can say, a businessman. And he understands, he basically discovers Ormus, this great quality of his music making. And he hires Ormus to work for his enterprise, Radio Freddy, which is a, we can say, phony uh, kind of uh, radio station. Veena discovers Ormus when his first successful record is released. But uh, just after this, this thing a car accident happens actually in the novel it is an a murder attempt or must goes into the coma once again magical element enters and Veena's voice hearing her voice and uh, uh, with a kiss uh, he magically reawakens but now uh, though he has lost connection with Gayomart, Gayomart is his dead brother uh, who inspires him with the, his music but instead he gains double vision once again the magical element which we have seen in uh, previous novels also 
with his left eye he sees maria maria is a is a look alike of vena and there is her dimension there is an alternative world which he is able to see and this can be the world of the readers perspective this can be the world of uh, what could have happened but not happened and while his right eye eye he continues to see his own world because it is quite disorienting to see to see two realities side by side he patches his left eye rashdi cleverly weaves real events with unreal outcomes imaginary outcomes through the double vision of armas for example in the alternative reality of the novel jesse parker not elvis presley who was the icon of rock music but his brother he becomes america's king of rock and roll watergate scandal because of which the american president nixon uh, has to uh, resign it is not an actual event but a fantasy thriller novel uh, J- john kennedy who was assassinated he survives the assassination in dallas but he is later assassinated similarly rashdi changes uh, uh, the name of artist for popular songs and it is quite deliberate attempt to create a sense of alternative reality Armas and Vina they arrive in USA in 1970s they sign a record contract with Yul Singh which is uh, basically a, once again a company and they form VTO and with this they rise to global superstardom finally they wed but with their wedding Armas double vision disappears and also with it Mari also goes into uh, hiding Rai they uh, he also joins Armas and Vina in america he is also an internationally celebrated photojournalist and he has exposed a scam artist in bombay actually once again there is a tale beneath this tale uh, he has stolen this particular evidence from some photographer and using it in his own name he has become uh, quite popular unbeknown as to amos rai and vina they are carrying on their secret affair and rai is with her in mexico when she perishes vina and amos part their ways because vina wants to perform solo she is on a tour to latin america when the earthquake swallows her the world mourns for vina after her death amos amos suffers depression and then stages a comeback again with a vina impersonator named Mira Seleno she is a look alike of uh, Veena eventually uh, Amos is shot dead in front of his New York apartment by another Veena look alike so this is once again a uh, quite a magical element experimenting with uh, double exposure technique in photography Rai once again sees Maria which was initial which initially came into the vision of uh, Amos in his photos and he also receives messages from her about colliding realities rai and meera find happiness together and they marry so two or three things almost kama he is basically mixture of two great uh, music personalities of the west john lennon uh, and elvis presley elvis presley was famous for his gyring pelvis uh, uh, we can say gyrations and john lennon was shot dead so he has mixed personalities of these two rock superstars there is rashdi also reintroduces characters from his previous novels like homic catrack and william mathold from midnight children ss sisodia from the satanic verses aurora jogoibi from the moors lassai this intertextuality uh, this deliberately creates a alternative world uh the, 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 as if uh, they are quite real character and there is also a famous quote uh, quote uh, from this book bombay's garbage agat mumbai ki kachra patti baatcheet in which a sentence could begin in one language swoop through a second and even a third and then swing back around to the first our acronymic name for it was hug me hindi urdu gujarati marathi and english this is quite a post colonial stance using uh, not uh, not so pure or we can say impure language or what we in post colonial theory calls 
appropriation of the colonial's language okay the next work we talk about is fury released in 2001 uh, the novel examines the relationship between art and artist the fate of individual identity in the face of fame and power and all these uh, things are presented through the character of malik solanka who is a cambridge graduate from bombay and a famous artist uh, malik has been a university professor in britain and he is fascinated by dolls he becomes a doll maker and conceives a character little brain which captivates the public but uh, malik is basically disappointed by the commercialization by the uh, taking his uh, doll to be uh, just an entertainment and not uh, appreciating its aesthetic and that is why solanka rejects uh, his second career also uh, because he feels he has lost control over his creation and leaving his wife eleanor and his son asman very young at that time he moves to new york uh, there is a fury within him he fears that because of this fury he he become he has become dangerous uh, to those he loves and he arrives in new york and it is the time of america's height of wealth and power elena she wants solanka to return to her and their child but he is uh, almost sure that he cannot settle down to the married steady life uh, which she wishes for him elena has worked hard uh, to keep intact their marriage new york he come across and make relationship with various uh, characters for example mila she is quite we can say vulnerable girl daughter of an important yugoslav writer and she is almost hiding here because she is disappointed by uh, her father's patch up with the rebels jack reinhardt who is a brilliant african american war correspondent but who also has forsaken his genius and is corrupted by fame and in this process, says jack has lost his beloved neela mahindra uh, neela in turn transfers her affection to solanka but to have neela neela solanka must relinquish meela though her gentle and prolonged love making has calmed him uh, solanka follows neela to a mythical country the magical element of this novel a country taken from swift's uh, gulliver travels free indian lilliput blefusco so lilliput and blefusco uh, the contraries the opposites they are merged and the name is given filbistan here a bloody war is going on and between two parties one on one side it is bolgolam and on the second it is babar and they both are fighting for supremacy involving herself in the revolution in lilliput blefusco neela tries to accomplish in the political realm what solanka only dreams of doing in his work so once again there is a uh, we can say crack between their chemistry uh, solanka is an uh, idealist while neela is uh, basically an active reformer or radical uh, he solanka is imprisoned but later on uh, behest of neela he is released but when he is about to leave the place he learns of neela's death in the end he decides to reunite with his uh, wife elena and son asman but when he comes there he, it is too late now because he witnessed uh, them leading a happy life with another man morgan friends finally uh, to have attention of his son he climbs up the top of the stairs of a bouncy ledge and shouts before uh, jumping look at me asman i'm bouncing very well so this fury novel presents uh, we can say a man a common man trapped into the consumerist society where he is not able to fulfill his ideals we come to the very popular work shalimar the clown released in 2005 a much talked about novel in which uh, rashdi returns uh, to india and uh, kashmir problem kashmir which is a political and uh, geographical area of uh, conflict between india and pakistan book is divided into five parts and they are they, these five parts are told through the eyes of five main characters first section which is set in present day los angeles it revolves around the life of 
India Offals. Uh, she is a beautiful documentary maker and the daughter of Max Offals, who is a former American ambassador to India and now US counter terrorism chief. Suddenly, uh, India's life is turned upside down when her father is assassinated by his former chauffeur, a Kashmiri man who calls himself Shalimar the Clown. Now the second part of the novel takes us back in time to 1960s Kashmir to a fictional village named Pachigam. In the middle of this glorious natural uh, paradise, the town is a peaceful mix of Hindus and Muslim. It is, uh, we can say, pre-militant era. The community is so close-knit that when a Hindu girl named Boonyi call and a Muslim boy, Noman Sher Noman or Shalima, they fall in love, the village elders unanimously agree that they should marry. Uh, Shalima is also known as a clown because of his great skills at tightrope walking. He is famous for it. On the night of their wedding, Shalimar playfully tells his new wife, Nu uh, Bungi, that if she ever, it is a basically light-hearted threat at uh, uh, basic level, if she ever leaves him, he will track her down and kill her and any children she may have that are not his. Max, who is an ambassador at that time, travels through Kashmir and stops at the village and here he sees Bungi dancing. The two embark on an affair because Boonyi is basically bored with this life. She wants something exciting, something uh, we can say substantial in her life and that is why these two embark on an affair and Max gets Boonyi an apartment in Delhi where she lives until she has his child, child from Max, a girl she names Kashmira. This illegitimate birth causes a scandal in the community and Max is recalled to the US. His wife, who is very tight-lipped, uh, she renames the baby Kashmira. Uh, she now renames it India and takes her with them. In the third section, we learn about the back history of Max, who was born in the French city of Strasbourg uh, into a Jewish family. Max ends up joining the French resistance because his parents are killed uh, by German forces. After the war, Max marries an aristocratic British woman and together they move to the US where Max quickly rises through the ranks and now he becomes a, he is appointed as an ambassador. Once again in the fourth section we are once again into Pachigam. Uh, now Shalimar has become an angry, brutal person only thinking of taking revenge. Bunni, she is forced to return back to the village after losing her child and and she has been officially declared dead for breaking the marriage vows. It is clear that Shalimar will kill her but Shalimar is waiting because he has promised her father and his own father that he will only do it after they are both dead. And Shalimar goes for training to various jihadist and extremist groups. It turns out that Shalimar is an excellent assassin, which is held. This this uh, quality is held by his tightrope skills. And in the book's final section, Shalimar, after being trained in Afghanistan and Philippines, finally considers himself ready to go to the U.S. to install himself as Max drivers as a part of a long long range plans for revenge. We comes to the present the opening of the novel uh, after killing Max Shalimar escapes the authorities Shalimar uh, escapes the authorities uh, the novel ends on an unresolved cliffhanger why because Shalimar is making his way to India's home and he is uh, full intention of fulfilling his promise to Bunyi that he would kill any children she had by any other man uh, this typically rich and eccentric supporting cast, uh, which is a very integral part of Rushdie's novel, they are Olga Volga, they who are the last surviving descendant of legendary potato witch of Astrakhan, which is once again a magical element. Firdaus Begum Noman, uh, who is Shalimar's mother and a snake sorceress. 
आयरन मुल्ला हु इज अ मुस्लिम टेररिस्ट लीडर कर्नल कच्छावा हु इज द लीडर ऑफ इंडियन आर्म फोर्सेज इन कश्मीर अ गुजर प्रोफेटिस अ फिलिपिनो टेररिस्ट लीडर एंड एन इंडियन फिल्म स्टार With this, we come to the Enchantress of Florence, released in 2008. This novel opens once again. It is side by side story of two great cities of 15th, 14th, 15th century, Florence and Fatehpur Sikri. Novel opens with a mysterious yellow-haired stranger who arrives in 16th century Sikri, which was at that time capital of Mughal Empire and also King Akbar. The stranger is tasked with bringing a letter to akbar from queen elizabeth first the stranger who calls himself ukalo he secretly searches for this letter finds it in the night before the ship reaches its destination steals it murders the captain and escapes the ship on a dinghy the narrative now shifts to the emperor akbar and he is also surrounded by concubines all the time but he loves his wife joda once again we have a magical character in the novel joda doesn't exist actually she is just an imaginary character and akbar is struggling with his own power and the concept of absolute rule uh, he is not able to validate his position as a monarch then he decides to found a temple in the city where people are free to argue and speak their minds the stranger who now calls himself morgar de la mor he meets with a master potion maker a mohini the skeleton at a brothel in sikri uh, mohini gives him a scent which allows him to slip past the guards at the palace and that is why he is able to meet the emperor he does so and he tells akbar that he has a message from queen elizabeth and requesting an alliance Akbar uh, to show uh, his development takes Morgo to his new temple but there a very uh, bitter argument happens between Morgo and Crown Prince Selim Morgo reveals his real name that is Nicolo Vespucci and says he has a secret to tell and the secret is his mother Angelica was the sister of first Mughal emperor Babar she was kidnapped by an Uzbek warlord then by a persian shah and this persian shah was defeated uh, at the hands of ottoman sultan akbar confers with his mother and uh, other um, um, elder persons of his family and they confirm there was a missing princess who was erased from family history because of her preference for the persian shah over her own family and her name was karakos karakos or literal meaning black eyes uh, uh vespucci he tells the story later that after the shah was defeated by the ottoman king angelica traveled to italy alongside the warrior argelia who fought with uh, uh, on the side of ottoman empire now the story shifts back in time three young men in florence at the time of renisa nicolo macchia antonio argelia and ago vespucci argelia is orphaned at the age of 9 he leaves florence to fight alongside a liberator andrea dona nicola works hard for success and ago vespucci becomes more and more of a homebody argelia on a mission is captured and then he is trained as a muslim soldier he becomes an allied fighter and successfully campaigning against vlad who was a russian um, uh, king of that time despot he is freed because of his uh, va uh, valor and then he changes his name to turkish pasha argelia Uh, at a battle uh, uh, in which he uh, fights on side of ottoman he defeats the persian army uh, this are uh, this king of this army has captive uh, has uh, held captive karakos karakos is now free and he finds karakos and takes her as his mistress now she starts calling herself angelica and goes with him to florence 
he returns to florence with angelica and her servant the mirror this is the name of the servant they seek shelter at nicolo uh, farm nicolo and ago also become enchanted with angelica and her servant and soon the rest of the florence fall under her spell angelica become known as the enchantress of uh, florence Lorenzo de Medici he plots to kill Argelia but he tells Angelica that unless she sleeps with him Argelia's murder will not even be punished she consents but Lorenzo dies of syphilis Argelia who has avoided assassination returns to the city and helps her and the mirror to escape and dies defending her Ago takes the women in and they travel to the new world. Niccolo Vespucci claims that there she was able to cast a powerful spell to keep her young forever. So uh, this whole story is told by uh, this uh, uh, Morgello and Akbar is so much entranced by this story he forgets about his imaginary wife Joda who disappears. But he is displeased by the ending. He says that Niccolo Vespucci is too young to be his uncle. And since Niccolo is impure, pro uh, product of incest, he can no longer share the emperor's company. Prince Salim's wife hatches a plot against Niccolo and he escapes danger across the lake. This lake uh, which becomes dry as soon as he leaves. This lake is the source of city's water supply and Akbar packs up and leaves along with his coat. Finally, Karakos appears to him, telling him that it was the mirror who had a daughter with Ago. Akbar realizes Nicola was innocent, he has lost his city for punishing him unjustly. Karakos says, however, however, that his belief in her has brought her back home at last, she will be his now forever. So this uh, wonderful fantastic uh, novel ends. Once again some critics find this novel too complicated and multi-layered uh, to be uh, deciphered uh, in a uh, straight way. Uh, however, uh, it is hallmark of Salman Rushdie's fiction to use these elements to have various plot lines coming together and to weave history and fantasy, magic and reality together to create uh, we can say uh, extraordinary experience for the reader that's all my dear friends and we will soon meet uh, with another video on some another wonderful aspect of literature thanks for your continuous uh, support